Yeah, I'll have to call you back. Uh, yes, I'm giving a TED talk. And yeah, I'll call you back, yeah. <sighs> Sorry, I was quite composed uh, preparing for this since morning. And my lawyers just called me. Uh, apparently, some guy called Lincoln time traveled from 1863. And uh, he stole our line. We came up with this a month ago. And uh, he stole it. Now I'm sure he changed the thin fabric of space and time so much that you already know this line as something else. But we coined it, me and the rest of the TEDx team here. So my lawyers are on it. Meanwhile, uh, I'm Pawan Kumar. I tell lies to make a living in... Uh, <laughs> uh, in other words, I make movies. Okay, so <laughs> Your question would be, why make movies, right? So why do we make movies? Yeah, that's right, to make lots of money, yeah. And yes, find the pretty girl and marry her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to become a chief minister someday, yes. <laughs> Amidst all these important things, we also make movies because sometimes we really have a story to tell. And uh, that's what I make movies for because I want to tell stories. Now, your question would be, aren't all of us telling stories? I mean, since morning, you've been hearing so many stories, right? And uh, everything that we do, that we talk, is either about the past or the present or the future or what you think of something that's happening. So we are all always just telling stories, right? And uh, why do we tell these stories? I think somewhere we define ourselves. Uh, what we're going through by sharing with the other person what's happening with us. And uh, who do we tell them? Where, where do we tell these stories to? We, we, we tell these stories to people, right? So if you put everything together, it is people telling stories to people. That's what's happening most of the time. Now, are these people really interested? Huh? Uh, uh, not necessarily, correct. Are they interested in all our stories? I don't think so. We, we choose people, right? So the story I choose to tell my wife, I don't tell the same stories to my girlfriend. <laughs> so, now, now that's a story for tomorrow's headline in a gossip magazine, but <laughs> what I'm saying is we all choose whom we tell our stories to. So people tell stories and they choose who they tell them to, right? Now just replace these stories with movies because that's what happens with movies. Okay, so to start off, like you have a shopkeeper and a customer, a doctor and a patient, teacher and college students. We have filmmakers and audience usually generalized as two extremes. Like this person makes films, the audience watches the films. But in reality, it is actually a little different because there are different kind of filmmakers, and there are different kind of audience. We filmmakers think that all of you are my audience. And all you audience think that I can make all kinds of films. But it's actually not true because we all have different tastes, right? I have a different taste in what kind of films I make and you have a different taste in what kind of films you watch. So a film industry kind of bridges this gap uh, with three strong pillars called stars, producers and distributors. And they take films to the audience. So in a very ideal scenario, what happens is, say a filmmaker with that taste, green for now, makes a film, puts it through the industry, and the industry is supposed to deliver it to that particular audience, and probably to a little to the rest of them, you know, who are migrating, they're changing their taste. But this is an ideal scenario. What's happening currently is the industry can only cater to a certain kind of filmmakers and can reach to a certain kind of audience. So they know what kind of films to make with stars, distributors, and all the marketing knowledge that they have, and they know what kind of audience, audience to go and target. Now, those films make money, and it's declared as a hit, but there are these filmmakers, right? And then there's those audience. I'm sure some of you belong there, and some of you belong up in the box. It's all okay where you belong, but there are these audience who are left out. So what about them? Now, in the current scenario, what's happening is a filmmaker, let's say, who makes blue films, by blue films, I mean the color representation. <laughs> so he makes these films. He makes a film and he puts it through the film industry. And the industry reaches 
those films to that set of audience. The audience don't like it, they don't see any sense, and it's considered as a flop. So it should have ideally reached that set of audience, right? So film loses money, it's declared as a flop, and this is what's happening in all these 200 films that we churn out every year. It's not reaching the right audience. And of course, some films are bad. But <laughs> so the film gets made, the distributor and theater give it to the wrong set of audience, and after many days, some of you would have seen the film on television or on DVD and you would have felt, hey, this is the film that I like, but how come I never heard about it, right? I just met someone who said, who saw my film on television. I'm wondering how come I didn't get you to the theater a year ago. So this happens all the time. So the change was, the result of this is that there are these set of filmmakers who don't get any funding and there's that set of audience who, did, who don't get the content they want. Right? So I thought about it I, because, because I'm a filmmaker and I need to tell my stories to as many people as possible. I found myself in this cluster. And because it's all medical students, I thought I'll put up cells and everything you, you know, to get your attention. So the F is filmmaker, nothing else. And the A is audience and nothing else. So uh, the filmmaker is generally surrounded by these audience. And I figured that I had to find my audience in this big group of audience and tell them my stories. Uh, the very ideal scenario would be to have my own island, you know, so I take this Mangalore and say, all my audience come and live here, the other filmmaker takes his island, and, but that doesn't happen. But this is what we would ideally want. So I figured I need to find them and they need to find me. I'm sure you haven't, some of you here haven't watched some movies which have released in the last two, three weeks because the poster didn't tell you that that's the kind of film that you would want to watch, the trailer didn't match up to your expectations, you didn't watch it. But you probably are looking for a film which is actually there, ready, but they haven't reached out to you. So this is a process which is constantly happening. And I made this possible. Uh, let's go with what I did in 2009, 2010, and 2011. The first two films are which I wrote. And the third one there is which I directed. That was my first film. So three years I spent on these three feature films and I figured that I had attracted a set of audience who were like-minded, who liked all the three films and who were interested in knowing what I was going to do next. So after these three films, I could hear this one voice which kept saying, what are you doing next? And my answer was, I have an interesting script and uh, I haven't been able to find the right funding to do this film, so I'm just figuring out ways. And you know, there was one voice together which said, we will give you the money. It wasn't my idea, it was the audience, the people who said, we will give you the money to make the film, which means that they had liked my work and they wanted to see what I would do next. I said, why not? Let's see how that happens. And Lucia became the first crowdfunded Canada film. And uh, I'm sure some of you have seen it. The others have heard about it but it did become sort of a cult film because of the way it was made and also the content and story and everything else. So what happened with Lucia was, to very briefly tell you, I very stupidly said, I'll make this film in 50 lakh because I was sure that I won't get 50 lakh <laughs> and people ended up giving me 50, one lakh in fact. And that happened in 27 days. And other than telling them that the name of the film would be Lucia, I didn't give them any other information and yet, they gave me 51 lakh from, from 110 unknown people. I've never met them, and I got that much money in my account to make this film. And we made the film uh, over a year and a half, and uh, many new things happened while we were making the film, the way we produced it, distributed it, uh, gave uh, a lot of opportunities for new talents, all that in another TED Talk, maybe. But uh, we'll move on to what was the output of this one. Uh, the output was, this became the first Canada film to be world premiered in London. And uh, it also won the best film award at the same festival. It went on to many other festivals during the year. Now, that's good because if the film is good and uh, if uh, the festivals pick it up, there are so many films that you would have heard that it went to XYZ festivals. But the biggest win was that it actually made six crores. So a film which was, which was started with a fund of 50 lakh, went on to earn so much and eventually it changed the mindset of many filmmakers because they were actually able to find these clusters and they were able to do it on a digital space, not really 
on a geographical space. So we, there are so many films that have come after Lucia where the filmmakers figured that they need to connect with their audience and it has mutually helped them make many films. So other than the good movie, what else what else did the people get? Because I'm sure, I don't, I don't believe in charity or contribution. So if I'm making a movie and if the movie is earning six crore, what about the people who actually contributed to it? So, I mean, if you have contributed, you would wonder that, hey, I gave money, they all made money and made a good film, of course. So we came up with another plan wherein the audience will actually earn from the film. Uh, because you're medical students, you would love things like this. So, uh, so this is a very pictorial representation of how the audience were involved in making money from the movie we made. So, for example, the movie was locked and only those who contributed it could distribute it online. So we made the audience into distributors. So let's say this college gave us, say, 5,000 bucks and we would give them a unique link called luciathefilm.com slash nitik and they can in turn pass on the link to all their students and that's the only link through which the students can pay and watch. So every time someone pays, the college makes some money. So that's how there were many distributors, many people who gave us money could in turn get some rewards back for doing this. And you know what happened? Piracy came down. So we, we made good use of how we network with people. And I'll tell you some numbers because they're very interesting. So there's a boy called Sharat who gave us only 2,500 rupees and we gave him a unique link and in a month he earned 1,42,000 out of, out of, by using this link and just telling his friends to watch the movie. So the interesting thing is that he made 464 people watch this movie online by paying money and not downloading it off a torrent. Now that's a huge shift, huge mindset shift, right? Uh, where you're asking audience to pay and watch. And this happened with 1,100 people. I've just got given you the 10 results over here. So the people who were involved with me were with me in all the three films after that, uh, Lucia being the first, U-Turn being my third film, which was about a flyover in uh, Bangalore, and now currently Vandu Motiakate, which is in theaters, and you all can go and watch it. <clears throat> So these three movies were possible because the audience, the people around me made it possible for me to take these decisions. No, U-Turn and Ondu Matya Khata is not crowdfunded, but we formed a company which is supported by the people and that company in turn can now make these brave decisions. You know, U-Turn as a script, a traditional producer rejected it even though I had a success of Lucia because U-Turn didn't have a star, it had a female leading character, it was about a flyover. This doesn't fit into the success, formula success of films in a commercial setup. A bald man trying to get married and set in Mangalore where there are 32 first-time actors in the film and again, I showed that film to a traditional regular producer and he didn't pick it up. Whereas we as a company could pick it up because we had this awesome support from the people. And uh, women who want to marry bald men, it's very difficult now. After the film, it's really difficult to find bald men. <laughs> so, uh, see how these three movies which became uh, the talk of the year in those respective years are all produced by a small company like ours only because we are supported by the people. So these filmmakers who were all confused and left out and those audience now have an answer because all, this, all the while these filmmakers were only craving for some artistic freedom. They wanted to tell their stories the way they wanted to say it. And those audience were looking for some sensible content. And all I did was put them together and connected them and this was possible. So who, who can actually make good movies? Anybody? People make good movies, right? So it is your demand which creates the right kind of supply. So demand for the right kind of movies and you get those good movies. And of course, we've been listening to so many sessions since morning. A movie doesn't feed the poor. It doesn't clothe the poor. In fact, it sometimes makes the rich richer. Uh, but, but the movie really uh, moves your soul. And many a times it shapes how you see life. And imagine a film is today seen by lakhs of people and a small fraction of that uh, audience is moved and uh, they take a step forward to do something nice. So yes, uh, movies uh, are made by artists and if you find an artist who's trying to make a film which, which is doing it from his heart, which a story which he wants to really tell, 
All you have to do is show your little support. You don't have to go invest into the movie. The least you can do is go to a movie theater, buy a ticket and watch, and that's all they need. And once you do that, he's got the funding for his next great story to be told. So it is people who make good movies. Thank you. Thank you.